brought to you by Diamond Racing. Welcome to the first edition of the Goodwin Boxing Fight Night. Today we're looking back at the brawl in the hall from last Saturday evening at York Hall in Bethnal Green, which featured four title fights, including the big heavyweight clash between Ian Lewison and Tom Dallas for the Southern Area Crown. We're going to start off by going back to the Friday before the fight at the Pro SW Gym in Loughton, where weigh-ins for the four title fights took place. for last Saturday night where we're going to be looking at the Ian Lewis and Tom Dallas heavyweight fight. It was a big clash for the Southern Area title and Josh you did feel that uh, Ian was vulnerable if it went beyond a few rounds didn't you? Yes I thought Dallas was looking fit in training but like everyone else Lewis has always had stamina problems so it was a big occasion to find out. But we are going to York Hall. We're going to our commentators Kevin Campion and Ben Carey. Let's go and review the action from last Saturday as Ian Lewis and Tom Dallas come to the ring. Obviously his career is taking a bit of a start from the price fight, but he grew with the right hand. So it is very much a crossroad fight and one I'm really looking forward to. I think this is a, a very, very evenly matched fight. The theory seems to be if Dallas can withstand the expected initial onslaught from Lewison. And here it goes, Lewison going for it straight away. As you said, Dallas with the right hand to the body, then Lewison comes straight to the head and has continued that onslaught. And Dallas having to try and tie him up and withstand the onslaught that we said was going to come. Dallas holding on here. It's all oh. action straight away from the right hand there. Dallas looks rocked. What a fight to start off with. Dallas is now here back. He's caught Lewis with the left hand there. Catches that 
scales at 17 stone 9 and a big attack like that he's got to be careful the right hand to the body there seemed to hurt Lewis a little bit well, he's 75 Dallas can withstand here he's dangerous the early onslaught it could well be his fight and he's already enjoyed it a lot of success in the Evans stages here yeah opinions seem to think if, as the longer the fight goes the, the more it's on there but a left hook there from oh, right hand right from hand. Lewis has rocked that Dallas, Dallas is in trouble Dallas in trouble there and he's cut Dallas has got a bad cut to his right eye Kevin we'll get a better look at it in a moment Dallas is rocking back on his heels there a right hand and he's down what a right hand from Ian Lewis in there what a right hand a great right hand from Dallas down he's up here Seems to cope all right, but it was only two rounds. It's interesting to see 
where he'll be in the mix of the domestic heavyweight scene now and see where he matches, where he matches up and where he goes from here. Right, so it's wide open. Obviously, you've got fighters now like David Price, who unfortunately he's back into the domestic title mix, probably he's lost to uh, Tony Thompson once again. You've got Joe Chisora, obviously, uh, but then Huey Fury coming through, the likes of Sam Sexton, Martin Rogan. It really is wide open. Which yeah. towers as well. Absolutely. I mean, I'd like to see Lewis and against Towers. That'll be a good fight. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to see the Lewis and Price fight just yet. It'd be interesting to know where Price goes from here. But Lewis and Sam Sexton, that would be a very good fight. One I'm interested to see. So, it, you know, Lewis and has got the skills. It's you know, he really could be in there with the mix if he gets in check and if he's focused. I think key now for Ian Lewis is is momentum. Yes, good wins promotional team at Keen to back end. This is his first fight since prize fight in February where he made a bit of a name for himself that night. He needs to stay busy now, Kevin, yeah? Absolutely. He's got a good team behind him. He's got a good, good trainer in Don Charles and, and they seem to be doing the right things for him. He's improving under Don. He's got the good wins behind him who are, who are, as you say, you know, putting some real momentum behind him and building his profile and people getting to know who he is. So he has got to keep busy. He has got to stay in shape and uh, he's got to stay focused and if he does that you know the domestic scene really does open up for him the good wins are definitely prepared to back him as well steve goodwin told me in an interview with the box right last week that he's quite happy to pitch in in now the next level they take lucas brown from commonwealth title as well they take richard towers really you know matching him has been quite difficult they can't be too far away from british title shot now no absolutely again the domestic heavyweight scene there isn't a great deal. Some have moved on to obviously world titles, as we know, the Hayes, the Furies, and, and so on and so forth, and Chisora. Um, so it does open up for domestically for him to do it, and he does need to move on, and the good wins are willing to back him, but Lewison has also got uh, to you know, put the work in himself. But, you know, all credit to him today, come in. He said he'd do it in two rounds, and he's done it in two rounds. So, you know, he can only beat what's in front of him. I do feel for Tom Dallas. Tom Dallas is, is a good guy, and unfortunately, since that, Price fight, he's never really recovered, and it's difficult to see where Dallas goes from here. It's quite an aging fight, this, and the, the volume of shots that Tom took bang on the bottom as well. I mean, he really did take some huge shots in there tonight. He did, yeah, and, and, and he coped with a couple of them quite well. It was the, uh, so I can't remember if it was the left hook or the right hook, we don't have the privilege of a uh, replay here, Ben, but you know, it, that's the one that put him down in the first round, and although he seemed to recover from that. Once he landed in the second round, Lewis and Dallas never seemed to really recover from that. So it's difficult to know where Dallas goes. Maybe we've seen Tom Dallas for the last time. And for Lewis, uh, what next? Well, as we said, maybe could move on for someone like Towers. Maybe could go for the British. It is, there, is, there is definitely matchups to be made there. It just depends on what the Goodwins want to do. And, you know, this is for the Southern Area heavyweight title now. So he's picked up a title. So about gradually building. Absolutely, it's going to be difficult to match him, so it uh, will be interesting to see what move the good wins make, but what a great performance, what a great main event to bring what has been a fantastic 13 fight card here tonight. Absolutely, yeah, there's been some great um, action, some good stoppages. I think it was intriguing before, you know, can Dallas survive the onslaught? It would have been very, very intriguing if he'd have made it through, but, you know, the end, the quality, the power, they're just told. We're left to wonder that for the uh, for the rest of time, Ben. So it's, uh, yeah, very good performance for him. It's a, a great fight, and uh, we look forward to doing it again soon. So, Josh, what was your views of the fight after, afterwards? It was an explosive fight, wasn't it? Ian came out swinging, bombs away, bombs away. Dallas just never got going, did he? I think that the Dallas team feel that Tom fought the wrong sort of fight. He was supposed to box on the jab, but uh, I think the occasion got to him, and I, I think Ian, you know, he winds his opponents up, and I think that what happens is they go in with a game plan of trying to be patient, and they lose the plot, don't they? Definitely. I think as soon as uh, Ian caught him with the first big shot, Dallas wanted to fire back straight away when really should have held, kept moving and trying to survive the first few rounds and try and tie Ian out. Now, what do you... I mean, I have... I have um, 
spoken by text to Tom Dallas. What do you what do you think his future holds after that? Um, I think he has to take a long, hard look at himself and see if he really wants to carry on. If he wants to carry on, he needs to build in the right way. Yeah, I mean, I'm, my view my view is that um, Tom's fought the wrong fight, and he, you know, these heavyweights do get caught. And for me, Ian Lewison in his second fight back was probably a step too far. Probably needed another one. Uh, the original plan was for Tom to fight Ian in on his third fight, but uh, Tom wanted it on his second fight. And uh, I'm happy to work with Tom on going, but it has to be done strategically. And I think if he if he boxes, you know, behind his jab rather than gets involved, you know, in these big big explosive fights, then I still think there is a way back for Tom. Now, as far as Ian's concerned, um, we're going to be moving on, aren't we, Josh? And, and what do you think the future holds for Ian now? Uh, possibly McDermott for the English title, but I've heard he really wants to take on David Price and I think, in his words, wants to finish his career. Yeah, I mean, Ian does feel that he, if he gets David Price in the ring, David Price's career is over. Now, people may, may uh, laugh at that, but let's see if David Price wants to get in the ring with Ian Lewis, and I doubt it. Um, but let's see, as an amateur, David Price did beat Ian Lewis in twice, but he had head guards on there. Let's see what happens when the Lewis and bombs connect, uh, because uh, David, as you know, was vulnerable in his last two fights, and I think we can safely say that Ian Lewis and probably hits harder than Tony Thompson. But uh, that's obviously in the agenda. I'm not sure that's going to happen, but more immediately, we're more than happy to take on John McDermott for the English title. And I think that Ian is more deserving than most other heavyweights out there of a crack at a big title. Do you not think so? Yes, yeah, so, uh, people have turned down the Southern Area title fight like Sam Sexton did. Yeah. But Ian's for the toughest fight out they possibly could, so he's definitely in line for a big shot. And let's hope he gets it. We'll have more news on that in the boxing show next Tuesday. There'll be another show next Tuesday on Bill Oak TV. But moving over to, uh, we're going to look at three fights now that uh, were quite early. Um, and we didn't really expect them to be. We're going to look at the fights with Dominic Akinladi, the heavyweight that's uh, 1 0 before this fight, AJ Carter, our other heavyweight from Brixton, he's 1 0, and Tony Conquest, he was uh, fighting as a cruiserweight against David Vicina. And Conquest was looking this as a pipe opener for his big bout with Wadi Camacho, the British title eliminator, in October. These fights didn't last too long, so we're going to show all three in, uh, in succession, and then we'll be back to discuss them afterwards. So, a two and a half stone weight advantage here for the giant Dominic Akinlade against Janice Ginters. And Kevin, I'm going to make a prediction that this one's not going to go to distance. And, that, and I, I agree. Uh, Akinlade, 19 stone six. I think he was 20 stone for his, his debut fight, so he shed half a stone. But it's uh, when you're up at this sort of weight, it, it really makes a little difference. And, and Ginters, it's going to be a, a good fight. I'm really looking forward to this. He's, he's lost four, he's been knocked out of three of them, but all three of his wins have been by knockout. But I don't think many people know that Ginters used to be a pro kickboxer. So he had over 60 amateur kickboxing fights as well as four pro kickboxing fights and one and two MMA fights as well. So he's a, he's a fighting man. Akiwadi just missing now with a giant overhand right against Ginters. He's with a hit or be hit sign. I don't think this one's going to be there. Nice right hand there from Akinlandi. Yeah, seems to get through. Oh! oh. oh Gins has uh, committed a real cardinal sin. He got hit on the top of the head and complains to the referee. Oh, lovely shot! This could be over. This could be over. He wants out, that's it. The corner man's up. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. I guess it wasn't going to go the full distance. I didn't think it was going to go the distance, and it didn't go the distance. Earlier in the evening, we saw one heavyweight prospect, Dominic Akiwadi, win impressively. Now it's the turn of um, AJ Carter. He won his first fight against Preston's Paul Morris, it was a bit of a tear up. He's got an all action style. And then he got the stoppage in that fight as well, he didn't quite get the stoppage. And he faces Vasek, who's the first time fighting in the UK, a Czech Republic guy, who won his debut, believe it or not, by TKO, but that was back in August of 2011. This is only his third fight, so he hasn't been very active since he's, he's, he did lose a points victory in Germany. So he hasn't been stuck before. 
So it'll be interesting test for Carter. He looks to put him under pressure straight away with some right hands to the body and a right uppercut. Yeah, it's fair to say that Vasek's carrying a few, uh, carrying a bit of timber. Yeah, he's coming. He, he's uh, not looking in fantastic shape, but you know, as it happens with the heavyweights, it's only a, a four-round fight, and they're big guys, and they carry a lot of weight and a lot of power behind the hands. So Carter has to remain sharp and and tight, and, and can't be. As I said before earlier on in the show, it's it's not a bodybuilding contest. It's not about how good you look. It's a, about whether you can win the fight or not. 50 stone 12 tonight was Carson, and a weight not dissimilar to um, one iron Mike Tyson in his prime. And it's perhaps inconceivable now to think of a heavyweight in top of the tree who would only weigh, you know, 15 stone 12, isn't it? That's yeah, it's 17 stone plus. The more modern day heavyweights tend to weigh a little bit more. I think the only exception, perhaps, around about that. Oh, it's a nice left hook there. Count the left hook by Carter. It's Vasek full short with the right hand. Up at eight. Not very gingerly, sure I don't know how much more of this he wants though. I don't think this is going to go much longer. He's down again. I don't think he wants too much more, Ben. No, I think you're right, Cam. Good night, Vienna. Good night, Vasek. He's beating the count. I think one flush. No, the referee's called it off. on the comeback trail after he was surprisingly lost his unbeaten record to Rotherham's Neil Dawson in December. And Kevin, it's going to be difficult for Tony tonight to come back from such a sh shattering defeat. Yeah, I mean, you can call it a shock defeat. I think Tony uh, will be the nice right-hander from Tony Stiles. I think Tony will admit that it was a shock defeat in Moses Corner. Lovely one too there from Tony. But he's been out for a little while. That was December last year when he got a lovely shot to the body. There. Looking really tidy already, Tony. I don't think this is going to go very long. What a comeback! Absolutely. Knocking the chain in here. Absolutely. The chain hurts to the body and can't get out of the way these, these attacks. Looking very sharp. Like he's got something to prove, Conquest. That's why I expect him to come back. He has been stopped before in the amateurs against Leon Williams and he proved that he can come back from a loss like that and he stopped Leon Williams in the pro ranks. So he proved he can come back. Fighters lose fights sometimes. You know, at cruiser weights. You know, they're heavy guys throwing shots, so I don't think you can be reading too much into that, that defeat. He got caught with, with a good shot, and unfortunately he lost his WBO international title, but he's come back looking really, really tight here. Conquest was all over the chain about 30 seconds ago. What do I keep the chain? I want to get through the round. Oh, lovely oh, shot. Huge body shot. Oh, what a shot. What a perfect shot by Tony Conquest. Straight into the solo plexus of the chain, turn away, and Bob Williams did him a favour there by jumping in, prevent from taking any more follow up shots. And a great response to Tony Conquest. Well, if there's people questioning about how Tony Conquest is going to be out after that shot defeat, I think he's answered it just there. And I know he's got a fight scheduled with Wadi Camacho, and I've seen Wadi Camacho at ringside here today as well. I've seen him already in the thing, so that'll be a very, very interesting fight. I like Lovely, Conquest, yeah. I think he's a very, very good operator. Uh, I think it was just that, I think it was a shock defeat against Neil Dawson, I think he got caught. I don't think too much can be read into that. He's got a great camp behind him in Jason Rowland and Richard Clark. Look exceptionally well. Like I said, if we wonder how he's going to come back, that's how he's going to come back. That was a fantastic response from Tony, and then which, which way? So Josh, covering those three fights briefly, Dominic Akilardi, what's your impression of him? He's a very well scored boxer, as he had a good amateur career, but I think it's uh, time to step up his opposition now he's had too early. Mm. And AJ Carter? He's quite raw and experienced, so he needs to be, be, be up slowly, but his guy was not good enough for him either, really. No, I mean, the, the point with these two fighters is Ginter's, you know, was had had won three from seven, and AJ's fighter had won one from two with a knockout. We thought it was fair, you know, it was a te little test for him, but the guy just folded. Um, it's very difficult when you've got these heavyweights you're trying to develop. AJ Carter's only had five amateur fights, so you're trying not to pitch him too deep. 
but obviously he wants a bigger test than he got on Saturday. Um, but let's see how he goes moving forward. He, AJ's fighting again on the Boys in Back in Town chart, Watford Coliseum on the 5th of October. Um, so we'll see how he gets on there. Tony Conquest, how did you feel he looked? I thought he looked really good, to be fair, coming off a first round knockout. I was wondering how he'd take it. I thought he might take slowly and possibly get a later round stoppage, but he came out and got him out there. He'd done a very good job on it. Yeah. Well, let's move on to the second title fight on the bill. This was Mene Edwards in a rematch against... J.J. Ujadiri. The first fight was a very ill-tempered affair. The, the weigh-in, as we've seen, wasn't exactly um, a peace-loving fest. And there was a lot of needle going into this fight. But we're going to join this fight in round number six. Four rounds to go for J.J. Ujadiri to try and turn this fight on its head. It's a fight he's losing quite comfortably. He needs a knockdown, he needs something to turn it around. Nice left hand there from Edwards. It's a grain of positivity for um, JJ. It's the fact that the swelling in his right eye has not really got progressively worse as the fight's gone on. No, good corner work there from Dean Powell. He's managed to keep that swelling. Uh, nice right hand left hook there from Edwards. Yeah, he managed to keep that swelling under control. Edwards has been targeting, he's been trying to use the jab, so it hasn't got much worse. But Ojadiri needs something, he needs something. He needs to throw all portions to the wind, maybe. I'm not sure he believes he can do it, looking at his body language. It doesn't look like, it's a difficult position to be in, he's six rounds down. He hasn't really had any success or, or wobbled Edwards at all. So it's a very, very difficult and dark place for, for fighters to be in. And it's, Although I'm saying it, you know, he's got to go forward and he's got to try a little bit more, it is very difficult and very easy for us sitting here to say that, Ben. It's, you know, it's, it's hard rounds, it's you know, hard going six rounds. And they've been six you know, hard, fairly good pace rounds, especially for cruiserweights. Let's not forget these are big fellas, so they tend not to be like the featherweights that can throw a million shots around. And yeah, again, we see the jab from Edwards there, three in succession. Trading left hooks there, but Edwards got through. Missing the left hook there and a nice right hand that got through. And Ojaziri's hands are dropping further and further down now. He looks very, very tired now, Ben. That right eye is now starting to worsen. Ojaziri just starting to unravel here. His efforts is coming on quite strong. I thought this was going to go to the scorecard to see it first of all. I couldn't see one fighter stopping it, but... As it goes at the moment, I think if Edwards puts his foot on the gas a little bit, he could get the stoppage here. But he begs the question, nice shots there. Would he want to? He's six rounds ahead. Does he need to go forward and, and stop it? If he gets the opportunity or he sees Ojadiri back to the ropes, he's going to go for it. Edwards is a fighter through and through and all fighters are the same. If they get that, that scent of, of blood, they uh, ultimately go for it. Let's give 
give credit though to Oji Deary there because he was in, in trouble in the last round and yeah, he's been far behind on the scorecards but he's kept going, he's still trying in there. Yeah, you know, he's behind on the scorecards, he's been wrong a couple of times. He hasn't really taken a backward step, he, he, he wants to go and meet Edwards uh, and make a fight of it and it's, the result of that is, uh, is a cruiserweight fight that It's been a very solid performance from Edwards, but it has been a good fight.
Nice right hand there from Ogdeniri. Edwards is back to the right, he's covering up now Ogdeniri. some stage. Josh, uh, what next for Melee Edwards? The cruiserweight division is a, 
Uh, it has been wild over for years, but I think recently, domestically, it's become really good with Wadi, Tony, John Lewis Dickinson. So there's a lot of good fights out there for him, just depending on how quickly he wants to move up from the in the opposition mm. standard. Yeah, we're going to sit down with uh, his trainer, Derek Granger, and uh, have a good chat over the next couple of weeks about the next strategy. I manage Mene. I work very closely with Derek uh, with uh, on decisions as to where we go, but we've had four fights since we started with Mene. Um, it's gone well. We beat uh, Shane McPhilbin, the... Artus Kukalaskis, who was 80th ranked in the world. And now two wins against Jay Joe Jadiri. So we're delighted with the way things are going. Mene's training hard and putting the work in, and we're delivering the opportunities. So we'll now see, we're going to sit down and see where we go from here. We now move on to title fight number three on the bill. It grazes Lee Markham, who has done a fantastic job since we signed him last year. He's unbeaten, he's improving with every fight. But he faced his toughest task to date. On paper with Tadzus Yonkus, who had been over to the UK previously, had lost to Eubank Jr. and George Groves, but had recently, just on his last fight, been to Italy and beaten an unbeaten prospect who was 6-0 and and they thought was heading for European title fights in the next 12 months. He dispatched the Italian in two rounds, so Lee knew he was up against it. Let's go back to the York Hall and, and join Kevin Campion and Ben Carey for the whole of the Markham Yonkus fight. Well, Lee Markham is undoubtedly one of the most improved fighters in Britain and it's another opportunity for him tonight to show the progress he's making as he looks potentially to mix in British title class and not to this in future, Kevin. Yeah, he's, he's progressed very well, he's improving all the time uh, under Lenny Butcher, so he's doing really, really well. He, he, you know, he's making waves, people are starting to take notice of him and he's got a good test, te good test today in, in Junkers who's, who's fought some good people but the good ones do handle him, the good ones do stop him, Groves and Eubank Jr I think have stopped him so no, he has fought some good people but nice right hand there for Mark of overhand right. Yeah, Junkers was always, uh, also stopped in three rounds by Gary O'Sullivan who was recently outworked by Billy Joe Saunders and I'm sure Lee Markham's going to have one eye, he looks as over middleweight tonight. He's going to have one eye on the fight in a couple of weeks' time between Saunders and John Ryder. Yeah, definitely. I, I think that the likes of Ryder and, and uh, uh, Billy Joe Saunders are uh, you know, a little bit out of reach for Mark at the moment. And let's, let's remember this is only Lee Markham's second 10 round fight. So, but, you know, he's making nice, steady progress and he hasn't had easy fights all the way, Mark. And he's, he's picked, his team have picked progressively getting harder fights and, and uh, that's a credit to Markham for not taking you know, easy fights or, or give me fights, so. Good body shot there by Mark, and that's become increasingly a feature of his game as he's progressed. He does work the body well. Works incredibly well. A lot of his stoppages have come from working the body. He is a, a known body puncher. Likes that left hook to the body there. He's trying to get round behind the right elbow. Junkers there kept the elbow nice and tight so he didn't get through. But also he likes the overhand right, which we see him land and the only success he's had so far, which is the same shot he actually took Diego Burton on out with which he will be seen fight tonight. It was a nice solid start for Michael looking for that body. But Jonkus is, re is replying, he's throwing shots back. But how do you see Markham in in relation to the likes of Ryder and, and Billy Joe Saunders? Well I think it's intriguing to see which uh, division Lee is going to campaign tonight he's obviously the middle line. It may well be, based on what you're saying, Kevin, that perhaps the likes of Ryder and Billy Joe Sword are slightly out of his reach, but seriously for middleweight, you know, British champion Paul Smith, the likes of Tony Dodson, maybe not a million miles away from Lee if he continues to develop the way he's doing. And, and that's the key, if he continues what he's been doing in Grazy Personal, he's, he's, a, he's a very very good pro, very professional is, is Markham, so it's interesting to see how it goes and, and how he how he handles John Kiss today and if he manages to stop him it will be a good barometer against the, the, the likes of Groves and Newbank Jr who have stopped him. Yeah, John Kiss was stopped in um, three rounds by George Groves, um, a youthful George Groves now four years ago but you know, certainly recently though, the likes of Newbank Jr, certainly you know, not, not far behind me, Martin. So. Coming into round two, Ben, I have Markham winning that round quite comfortably. Yeah, it's a mature, composed start by Lee Markham. It's a sign of a fighter who's quietly confident in his own ability. I like Markham. He's got a nice, solid pro look about him. Keeps his hands nice and tight. He doesn't do anything silly. 
on, it just does everything well. You wouldn't say spectacular, everything apart from the body shots maybe coming out as his is his hallmark, but he does everything quite nicely. You know, it, it, there's nothing that you can say is a real weakness. It's difficult to pick a weakness in him at the moment from what we've seen so far. Jonker's trying to get on the jab a little bit more, but Marker replies his, a double jab straight back. Nice little left hook there around the guard. And a right hand. Yeah, Marker just missed the right hand though. Evidence of the attack. A nice body shot. Gets that body the shot in there, there, just managed to slip it in under the elbow. Yeah, found the gap really well with that, didn't he? And he's looking for it again. He turned it back upside, upstairs as well and turned it into a left hook to the head. Nice shot. Very few solid practitioners in the body in the UK. Fighters are really working. I can't think of any of these points at really. Obviously, the famous example of back in the United States was Mike McCallum many years ago now. It's, it's such a big part, body shot, body shot. You get more stoppages from body shots than you do from head shots. And if you've got someone that's a really good body shot, a body shot, it can be a, a huge thing to have in the arsenal, to be able to break someone down. But it took a couple of shots there from Jonkis. Jonkis is no mark. No, he could break hand there. Mark and took it well. Jonkis is coming back into it, comes back with a body shot of his own now. On the arms. Markham just went a little bit quiet this part of the round. Dunk just had to come on a little bit. Markham's just picking it up a little bit more now. Nice double jab. Certainly no formality for Lee Markham so far. Ah, oh, John Kiss's game, as we said before, you know, the really good ones seem to handle him, and that's why this was such an interesting fight. Nice work there for Markham. Very good, very between body and head. Yeah, it's why it's interesting to see where it, where he compares with the, the top top guys out there at the moment. So nice right hand from John Kiss there, land on the gloves. But yeah, John Kiss has certainly had his success in this round as well. Yeah, he's certainly game. He's got some shots through. He's had a bit more of a go this round. Markham still a nice right uppercut there. A lovely right uppercut. Sunk his legs and then turned in the right uppercut. Very, very nice. That's take one in reply from John Cus, but overall though, Markham again is getting the better quality and more heavier shots through this round. Yeah, I think that's just one in the round, just the heavier shots towards the end there. Jonkus may only have won nine fights, he's had 15 defeats and drawn one. But interestingly, in his last fight, he did travel to Italy and he ended the unbeaten record of a six fight Italian there. So he's coming to this fight with a bit of confidence, Kevin. Yeah, he's coming off a good win against the Italian prospect. And as we said, he's no mug. It's, you know, you can see why he's got the wins because he's a very capable boxer. I do think Markham's outworking him at the moment and getting the strong things, but you can see his game. He's a, he's a very good live opponent for Markham. To, to learn against, to fight against, and to ask some questions of him. And we know Markham's already got the one loss from Gary Bolden fight, which was close fight, yeah. close fight. Controversial, some would say. But yeah, it's, it's interesting to see. It's good that they're, they're picking this level of opponent for Markham, to, so he can, you know, steadily improve. And uh, you know, these are the kind of fights that need to be having. Shots by Markham, left hook to the body, followed by the right hook round the side. Again, John has taken the body shots well so far, but obviously they have an accumulative effect, don't they, as the fight wears on? Yeah, they can do. I think there's only been two or three that's actually gone through clean. He's managed to get that elbow down quite a lot to be able to protect it. But yeah, ultimately, as the rounds go on, and you know, bearing in mind we're only in the third round and we've still got seven and a bit rounds to go, it's. Uh, you know, it can have an accumulative effect, a cumulative effect and, and could wear him down. It'd be interesting to see. But he does look in good shape, John Cush, so... Yeah, both, both boxes look in tremendous shape for this one. John Cush trying to nip his way off. Nice right hand, nice overhand right there from Mark. He likes that shot. And that's working well for him there. The left hook to the body and then turn their left hook into the head. That's working really well for him. Nod, a little nod of a appreciation there as he accepted that was a good shot. Markham trying to ground the 
variation there, went to go for the left hook to the body and turned it into an uppercut, it's partially blocked by John Cusper. Good idea. Markham's fought how he would, we said he likes the overhand right, that's the one he stopped Diego Burton with and we said he likes the body shot, the left hook to run it and that's what he's done, he's looking for that overhand right and he's looking for the left hook to the body. So he's fighting as we'd expect him to, nice right uppercut there. Again, success of that uppercut, the two times he's dropped that right uppercut in, he's worked really well for him. He's starting to get through a bit more regularity now Markham as he moves towards the end of the third round. It does look like he's trying to he's slowly breaking jumpers down here. Markham against Talis Jonkus and Kevin we think seem to think he was starting to make inroads in round three. Yeah he seems to be three rounds ahead he did seem just like he's slowly breaking Jonkus down there he did get through with a bit more ease in that last round it'll be interesting to see now whether he can carry on to build on that and but a nice right uppercut two right uppercuts there from Jonkus. He's having a go this round Jonkus at the yeah. start of this round for sure. Jonkus trying to measure Markham with his jab then bring the right hand home. That might be what the corners told him to do, just be a little bit more busy, but Markham comes that back there with the combination that he's like, that left hook's working well for him. Jab getting through there from Jonkers. Markham showing good composure, if Jonkers has had the odd fleeting success, yeah, Markham's still tucked up pretty well, but he's caught on the left hook there. caught on the left hook there, took it well. That's what happens sometimes, you can get wild and get caught, but he does take the shot well there. It did seem to land pretty clean as well. He seems to take that quite well, Markham. That might have broken, broken Jonkins' heart a little bit. Markham being more thoughtful in this round so far, but he's still working the bodies with the sword. He's shipped a couple of shots this round, Markham. He's not been quite as effective as he has been in the last round. I think Markham needs to up the pace a bit. Is he being one place like uh, I think it's, it's his second 10 round fight, so I think that'll still be playing on his mind slightly. I don't think he needs to do anything too differently from what he's doing. He's ahead of Mike Arts, he's won all, all three rounds. He, he shipped a couple of shots, but you know, at the moment I think he's he's doing nicely with what he has to do. I think he just has to keep doing more of the same. Nice Yeah, it works the body. He's still looking all the time to get that left hook in around the right elbow, but yeah, nice variation between rights and left, and, and he's turning that left hook around the right hand of John because they're really, really nicely. I like to see him follow a straight right hand in after that left hook to the head that he gets around. I like to see him throw that straight right hand down the middle, just to follow on that uppercut. He tends to follow the left hook to the head with the left hook to the body, which is the shot he likes. So I'd like to see him turn in that right hand just see if he can catch Junkus with it. Nice left hook there from Markham. Again. Trading left hooks there. I think Junkus got in and Markham's just missed, but I don't think he landed clean on Markham then. Nice right hook there. Markham round again. Round five of this turn round, and so far we mark him fairly comfortably um, four rounds ahead on our card. Although Junkus, you know, is still in the fight. Yeah, in that last round, you maybe made a case that Junkus might have nicked that round, or, or maybe even shared the round there. It wasn't quite so comfortable for Mark in that fourth round, and this is coming into the rounds now as we were talking off air, Ben about where Markham's got to make a statement if he wants to be used in the same bracket as the likes of Billy Joe Saunders, etc. and Groves and, and Gary O'Sullivan that we've talked about. He needs to, to make a statement in his rounds if, if people are going to mention him in the same vein. Yeah, interestingly, Chris Eubank Jr. is also you know, a decent prospect as is Lee. You know, he's managed to get Jonkers out of there and through and Eubank Jr. is some, the second bit of flack in the, in the trade because those have been, been a long puncher. But, you know, Markham doesn't need to be fixated on what those other guys have done. He's boxing quite nicely. He's obviously got his own style to develop at his own pace, and he's doing well. Yeah, absolutely, and, and, and that's the case. He, he is developing nicely, and that's the key for him. Whatever happens from here, 
Um, people are going to make the references between the fights that Jonkus have had, and you know it's only natural it does that. Nice right uppercut there from Jonkus, the head back of Markham, and a left hook to follow. It's only natural people make that assumption, but you know you've got to give credit to to Markham for the way he's bringing his career along nicely, gradually increasing in class as he goes along, and, and uh, you know that's very commendable. Whatever happens on this fight, and wherever he gets the win or doesn't get the win. Main events, obviously, back in Lee's career. And nice right hand high from there. Sorry, Ben. I think, you know, it, it's that we can progress to the next stage, but it does it if Lee Marker could come through and win a first title or a meaningful title, you know, beyond the British Masters tonight. Left hook there, Trey just missed his whistle past John because his head was oh, quite landed from Markham there. Yeah, as we saw in the last round, yeah, this round again, very close, not between them. Very close. I think Markham's done better this round. I don't think Jonkus has had the success that he had in the last round. I think Markham is is improved this in this, this round than what he was the last round. But nice combinations there from Jonkus. Very little work for referee Bob Williams to do. The fight is just getting on with it. I want it straight away there from Markham. The yeah, it's not much tying up going on, which is good to see. It makes it a good fight there. When they're in close, the hands are up and they're looking to trade rather than to, to cover up and to, to mess around, so it's good. Jonk has come back. Markham looking for that left hook to the body again. That's it, my friend Kevin. Yeah, it's a couple of times now. said that this fight would be a test of Lee Marker and would uh, indicate where he actually stands in the domestic division. So how did you feel? I thought he just gave a really good performance considering both um, Eubank and uh, Gross stopped him and he did as well. It shows you he's up to their standard because if they stop him and he stops him, mm. he's moving along very nicely. Yeah, I'm delighted with Lee Marker. I mean, he's a consummate professional. He's, he's got everything that you'd want from a boxer. His commitment, he's got fantastic PR, he's got a good support base. And he's got talent, and uh, we're doing it the right way, and we're taking the right fights at the right time. And I expect to see Lee Markham back out in December. Um, he may, he's got a little niggle here and there, so we may go and sort that out first. But if if we if we don't do that until after December, I'd expect to see Lee out in December seventh at your call. We now move on to title fight number four. It's Diego Burton from Peckham against Danny Brown from Wickford in Essex. It's an eight-round clash for the British Masters bronze super middleweight title. These fighters have met once before when Burton won a shutout four-round decision. It was never going to be like this this time. Danny Brown had took a nine-week training camp for this. It was a big fight for him. Diego had worked hard for it as well. This was a closely contested fight. We're going to join the fight in round number five where Ben Carey and Kevin Campion are commentating at York Hall Bethnal Green. <laughs> I think both corners will be fairly happy the way it's gone so far. Neither fight has really taken a hold of this fight by the scruff of the neck and coming into the second half of the fight then I'd like to see one of the fighters really show that they want this and take this fight by the scruff of the neck. And what, what, what advice would you give to Brown, Kevin, in between rounds? He's, he's, he's had a quite a nice start, but I think he just needs to build on it somehow. Yeah, I think just tell Brown what he was doing, it was working for him in the second or third fight. Just take that half a step back, time him as he comes in, as he's rushing in, and look for that left hand lead and go from there. That's what I'll be saying to Brown, like that, as he rushes in and then and then returning straight away. That's what's worked for him. Uh, I think he got a little bit overwhelmed by Burton in the last round. Burton just 
stepped in a little bit more, but Danny does seem to be back on to trying to time Burton a little bit more. And again, left hand, nice left hook there from Burton. Raiding tactics now, where he's rushing in, but he's getting out quicker before Brown can um, counter. And I think that's what he was trying to do over the first couple of rounds, but not so successfully as Danny was, was timing, timing the shots. And Brown doesn't seem to be timing quite so well just now, and that's why I think Burton's getting a bit more success. He is raiding in and out. It's a very close round, this one. Burton might just be shading it on work rate. The right hand there as well by Burton. Certainly in previous fights. Yeah, he seems to be growing into it a little bit more. Dropping his left hand there, trying to go ground in. Managed to turn him now. Trading hooks. There's some brown as the fight's going on. He probably needs a, a decisive round. Yeah, as you're saying, someone needs to take this fight worse off the neck. I think Burton's worked slightly harder in this round, and I'm edging towards Burton as it stands. But Danny's coming back with some nice shots there. Not one fighter has really taken control of the centre of the ring yet and bullied the other person about it. It's been very to and fro. And Trading hooks again now. Nice right hook there from Burton. Burton just going to nice right up and changes now. Left hook. First signs that Brown's just starting to struggle now with the Burton's work rate. He's very much in his face and Danny wants to get that half step back. He did answer back quite well. He's not been hit by many clean shots as Brown, so it's still a very pick and fight. And Brown with his back on the rope is coming. This may be the International Masters Bronze title, but it shows what it means to these fighters. It's still a professional title, it doesn't matter which way you slice it, it's still a professional title. And they showed it just there, absolutely, how much they want it, and it's good to see. Yeah, strong finish to the round there. I'm mean, intrigued to see whether it's taking much out of either fighter. Uh, Brown seems to be tiring to me. Yeah, I thought that, just apart from the last flurry, although Burton came on strong, there, I think the last part of the round was down to Brown. Burson was swinging well with shots, but Brown wasn't taking many clean. And I think, I think 30 seconds before the fight, before the end of the round, it was it was Burton. But the last bit of the end there, I think Brown was just in it. So very, very close round to score that one. A very, very close round. So Danny, I think it's because he let Burton come on and as we talked about his, his work rate press on now. So I think Jason's just letting him know that he's, you know, he can't afford to let Burton, you know, his work rate overwhelm Brown too much. So I think he was just reminding him of that and that's better from Brown. We're in round six and I suppose given the fight it's eight round, we're in the championship rounds now I suppose really. Yeah, Three very much so. And how did you score the last round? Who have you got uh, ahead? Yeah, I thought Burton nicks it again. I'm going 3 2 up now. Yeah, I'm the same. I think Burton is, is just as you that last round, but it was a very, very close. I, I couldn't argue if it went either way, to be honest, that last round. Brown coming forward now. Trading in the corner now. Yeah. He's got to be careful, Brown. There he was a bit square up when he was throwing the shots, but it was good shots from Brown. Nice defensive work there. Both men trying to battle and get a foothold in this fight. I'd just like to see one of the fighters establish a jab and, and just really take hold and and try and take a scruff, you know, say, like I said, take the fight by the scruff of the neck, just trying to establish themselves. They're, they're both sort of waiting for each other. It swings from, from one way to the other then. So we see him. Out of 
shots wading in. It swings from Burton to Brown to Brown to Brown. Yeah, very few clean shots landed there. I thought Brown might have got a better of that exchange, just in terms of sheer accuracy. Not a lot between them again, though. Depends on how they're scoring this at ringside, whether you go for the Danny Brown with perhaps the cleaner work and maybe the timing, or whether you go with Burton's higher work rate and pressure and, and whether it's they're scoring the shots that are landing on the gloves or what a nice combination there from Brown. Good work by Brown, Burton's trapped in the neutral corner. And he's got, Brown's got Burton trapped in his corner as well. Good response by Danny Brown, he needed this round. Yeah, I've got Brown winning this round. I think the cleaner work should have been, been from him in this round. Nice little furry there, getting Burton trapped in his own corner. Nice left there from Burton, I Again, Burton just attacked for a little bit far out. Danny Tyron in there, he stepped back from the first one and then threw the left hand there and did catch him. This makes this final two rounds come out very, very important. It's a very difficult fight to call. Neither fight has been able to dominate two rounds in a row. You know, it's just going either way, isn't it? Back and forth all the time. Absolutely, it's swung from one to the other and back again. So it'll be interesting to see. I think this seventh round is hugely important coming up. Uh, I think whoever wins this this round is going to have the the yeah. to the last round, Absolutely, yeah, yeah the Vincent leads to go into the last round and from there. So this is a hugely important round and I'm sure that's what the corners will be telling them. I'm going to put you on the spot, Kevin. Who's going to win the fight? It's a difficult one to say. I, I couldn't pick at the moment. I I've changed my mind about four times throughout the fight. <laughs> I think you get that extra second win when there's a title on the line. Nice jab there from Burton. And in response from, and a nice jab in response from Brown. Burton at the moment seems to be just throwing a single shot, whereas Danny Brown seems to have success by tying the two or three shots up. Maybe if Burton was to tie the two or three shots up, he'd catch Brown a bit more. is a very very well matched because Brown is not wanting to commit himself and Burton's also thinking twice before raiding in recklessly. A bit of a stalemate at times. Stalemate at times but it's made for a good fight. It hasn't been a, a cancer show a boring fight. They both had a go there and that's much better. This is what we're talking about there. Double jab then the left hand from Danny Brown and it gets success. But as the way the fight's gone Burton comes back straight away. Absolutely. Burton and Brown's going back to the corner there but Bert, Burton manages to work his way out of the corner. Nice use of the jab there by Burton to stop Brown from getting some out his attacks. Definitely making more use of the jab this round. He didn't take advantage there. Burton double jabbed and got round the side of, of Brown there. Could have thrown a straight right hand down the middle. He could have caught Brown there. He got a nice angle on him. Lovely lead left hook there by Burton. Great shot. Find that extra gear, and based on the seventh, it's Burton at the moment. Yeah, Burton's had the cleaner work, but then there back comes Brown with the right hand there. Burton just seems shaken a little by that shot. That is like a right hand's come up a cut. I wonder if fatigue's playing a part now when fighters are fatigued. The shots that wouldn't normally hurt are watching to their boots, so it'd be interesting to see as it goes forward. A great response from Danny Brown there, we thought Burton might be. Barring that scare though, I think Burton's largely just shaded this round really. And going into the eighth, I think Burton might just be in front. Yeah, I think, although they've both had their successes in this round, I think it's been a more sustained from Burton during this round.
this is where a knockdown could be fatal one way or the other for either fighter. Burton trying to establish his double jab there again on that last bit just before the end of the round. They did attack from a little bit far out. Coming into the final round now, Ben. How do you have it scored so far? I've got Burton just sticking it. I think tactically it's going to be quite interesting now. Does Burton think that he's far enough ahead? Does he sit back? Or does he um, try and go out and win the last round to put it beyond dispute? But then will, will that lead him to make mistakes? Yeah, I actually scored that round of draw. I think it was, it was quite even. I, I think they both had had shots that got through it both times. So I've got them even going into the last round, so it'll be very interesting. It, I think both are going to go for it in this round. They've got to, it's a title fight. I don't think any corner, either corner, can be sure that they've got the fight or they're ahead on the cards. So I think it's going to be a very, very interesting last round. And we're going to find out who wins it more. sustain sort of pressure up or can they? That's the, that's the key. Yeah, again, there's not a lot of shots that are landing accurately. There's plenty of endeavour there. It's a lot of messy work on the inside. No one's really got through with any eye-catching fling shots so far in this round. The tactics go out the window now. It's just sheer application. The both boxers trying to go at it. Absolutely. Great determination. And this is this is where the, the boys really earn their money. When you're tired, you know, let's be honest, professional boxers, you know, certainly they still don't earn the money that they deserve to earn. You know, a lot of them have to train with jobs and, and uh, you know, there isn't loads of money in the sport at this level and they really do earn their, earn their money into these rounds when you're tired. It's the final 90 seconds. And again, another round that you can make a case for either fighter. Been very messy, no one's got really any clean shots. Danny got a couple of shots there from on the inside. A lot of it's been tying up, grabbing a breather when they can. Nice right hand there by Burton. Didn't really land clean, he caught Brown off, off, off balance a little bit. And then they go into trading shots again. Nice left hook from Burton now. scoring this one. Well, it's been difficult because both fighters this round have, have matched each other's work rate. When he put his hand between the shot, difficult. Yeah. Nice left nice from Burton there. I mean I've got them equal going into this round so it's really whoever wins this round it's still equal. I think one eye catching punch can swing the round in either fighter's favour at the moment. He's had some success with the left hook. He's got through a couple of times on that. The left hook and right hand is, is the shots to throw against the South Wall fighter. But as I said, no one's really landed anything massively clean. It's been very messy. But they both won it. the shots that could turn the fight then. I have been shaded around but after Brown's story I've got it even again now. <laughs> the crowd has gone mental here. They really enjoyed that. Great respect shown by both fighters. I'm going to get off the fence. I've got Burton nicking it by a single point. Yeah, I think Burton possibly won that last round towards Burton but only very slightly. I'll be honest Ben if it's awarded the other way there'll be no argument from me. Yeah, very no, very close fight. I agree fight. with that. I agree with that. Good fight. Two well, two well matched fighters against plenty of respect. And we said before the fight that equal fighter had equal support. But I don't know if you noticed there Ben at the end of the eighth round the whole of York Hall yes. was on their feet applauding now. Yeah. They really really enjoyed that one so uh, I think they've got a few extra fans here Burton and Brown. 
I could be wrong, but given it's an eight rounder, I've got a feeling I mean, Jeff Hines will be scoring this fight. I'm not sure they'll have three judges. I'm not honestly sure, yeah. I, I, to be honest, um, uh, Ben, I, I would imagine it would be Jeff. I can't see any more officials set at the side to score it. It will be uh, interesting to see how, how the referee scored it. Let's find out. Well, a lot of people were, had mixed uh, decisions on that. Some thought Danny won it, some thought Diego won it. Many of us had it scored a draw. But the good news is that there's going to be a rematch over 10 rounds for the silver title on December the 7th at York Hall. I can't wait to see the fight again. It's going to be a cracker. And the two lads put it all on the line once again. And I think the winner of that could well move on to something even bigger. So a fantastic fight. And we look forward now to seeing them go out on December the 7th. We're now going to move on to show some highlights of the rest of the card. Firstly, show star Sahal Ahmed was taking on Dan Carr in a four-round light welterweight division. We're going to join this in the fourth and last round. Fourth and final round coming up. I think it's fair to say we've probably seen more of Dirty Dan than we have of the showman so far. Yeah, very much so. But Dan's, Dan's certainly, as you say, living up to his name. But, you know, he should be assistant. He's up off the stool. He looks yeah, like he's ready and rearing yeah, to go. It's all about psychology as well. And he was the one that in that round, in that third round, that was marching across and, and wanting to engage. He seems up for this. Be interesting to see how the referee scored it as the first fight of the evening. We, we got wrong. <laughs> so it's, uh, I don't think we'll score anymore, Ben, because we got the first one completely wrong. Absolutely. Oh, Ahmed's just got to get on that, that jab. Got to. And I think Carl's going to go for it. Carl's come out like a man, like he's fighting. To, to get the win or even a, a share of the points. Yeah, well, just two wins in Dan's previous um, four, seat, four outings. But you wouldn't know it. You know, these journeymen take pride. They take pride in seeing out the distance, but they also want to get that win as well. That's the thing about a journeyman. If you don't take care of journeymen, if you don't establish things, some of them will have a go. You know, as much as journeymen know their trade and, and know their job and a lot of them know on the road it's very difficult to get the win but if they sense that they're going to get that victory there are you know they can go for it and and they're much better fighters than people give them credit for journeymen you know as we said before a lot of them do this for a living so they don't fight like perhaps they would like to knowing for where I don't want to get stopped don't want to take risks that perhaps a prospect will take that's much nice better shot, from nice shot, much better yeah, using yeah. his feet now trying to keep the distance using his feet and boxing just can't understand seat much better. Yeah. Right, got caught there, got caught two shots there from the car. And getting caught on the inside. Just enough from sale, just found a bit of room with the uppercut, but then dropped his hands again and paid the price for it. The show star and very showman there as he drops his hands. He yeah. is very raw, we, we can't forget Ahmed, he, so he has that much of an amateur pedigree, so it is learning fights for him. But that's what I'd like to have seen him do from round one, using his feet creating angles, giving himself a bit of distance so that cars charging in and falling short and then catching him from there. So that's much better. Two or three shots and then changing angle, much better for It's all about keeping the distance from the hail. There's probably a minute left in the fourth. It seems fine to have found a key to how to keep Carr at bay. Just needs to get through with some scoring shots to push this round and possibly the fight as well. See, that's much, they say, much better, the movement, and maybe that's what Kevin Marie's told him in the corner maybe use his feet he looks like he can move he, he looks like from there it's certain bits were quite good and I can understand why there is some talk about Ahmed going on to be uh, a good prospect and I know there's there's some certain areas talking saying you know he's one to watch out for I can't say from this showing I think much of that but nice shot there yeah, away. all trainers have to be versatile as you know Kevin but between Sahail and um, Kevin Anderson, who Kevin Marie also uh, trains. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Ben. Chalk and cheese. Very much so, yeah. Completely different styles. And, and that's the thing as a trainer, and Kevin's a very experienced trainer, so he will know. You, you work to a fighter's strengths, and, and you know, Kenny Anderson's a very tough man. You know, likes to, likes to punch. And Ahmed, I would imagine, would try to, hands down, very orthodox, trying to use his lateral movement, slip shots. Just hasn't moved enough for me tonight. 
got involved in the brawl, trying to wrestle with him a little bit too much. Yeah, it's been a close fight to score this. It's been intriguing to see where the referee goes. Yeah, it's very difficult to score. Ahmed's perhaps had the cleaner shots right at the beginning of the round, but Dan's come on towards the middle and the end of the round there. be interesting to see how he scores it, how he scored it. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see another draw. It is round and, and maybe the second round is the one he got it. Card showed some, some good stuff and, and asked some questions of him. But I mean it's his second pro fight, he'll have things to work on from here and he's been asked a few questions which at your second fight you want to have. It's, it's good to knock everyone out straight away but you don't really learn a lot so you know it'll give the, the team a lot to work about and we don't know he's had a good he's got good support here so he might have been a little bit nervous Ahmed but I would like to see him move a little bit more, box a little bit more because I think that's where his strengths lie. Yeah, well done, Sahail Ahmed. Uh, I don't think he'll be um, banging Steve Cuswin's store down for rematch with Dan Carr anytime soon, but he can certainly be wrestling here. Another exciting signing that we made recently was St George Jupp, who many of you will remember got to the prize fighter semi-final and gave Choi a fantastically hard fight. This is George's first fight since signing with us. He took on Ivan Zlavikas in a six-round contest at lightweight. We join this contest at the start of the third round. I've seen Levickis before and he's, he's got quite a rangy jab, but he hasn't seemed to have used the jab all that much because obviously he's carrying that left hand so low. So I'd be interested to see if Levickis throws in that jab just to see what questions he would ask of, of Jupp. However, saying that, I think Jupp's moving very well. Uh, I think he'll be quite easily be able to get past it. But it'd be interesting if he does use that rangy jab. Levickis has got long arms to see whether he can try and just give a bit of distance between him and Jupp. Warming up quite nicely this bout anyway for the, the third fight of the evening. Yeah, let's hope now that George Jupp can stay more active. I think um, he kind of sprang on the scene with prize fights so many thought that he'd gone and established himself. It's not quite happened that way, but hopefully now he's signed to Steve Goodwin and um, the Goodwin promotion banner that he can be you know, kept boxing at least, at least four or five times a year potentially. And that's the good thing, he just needs to keep active now and, and get fights as, as all fighters do, talk to all fighters, all fighters like to be as active as possible, get a bit of momentum, you know the long layoffs are difficult but you know, with a good win team what they'll get him is they put on regular shows so it'll be interesting to see if he can get on the shows, if he can stay injury free, it'll be interesting to see where he goes because he boxes very nicely, he's, he's got some good skills so he uses his legs well. Nice variation between there. So he's got good lateral movement. He's got good footwork. He looks he looks well balanced as Jupp. Jupp seems to be getting to a bit kiss at the end of the second round. I'm intrigued to see if he can build on that. Yeah, nice double jab there got through from Jupp. And I'd like to see him double jab there and maybe follow up with the right hand afterwards. That right hand's gonna gonna fit all the way through. And the biggest looks at that left hand counter as he comes in. I don't think there's a tremendous difference between them in terms of height, but Jupp kind of fights in a bit of a crouch, doesn't he? Yeah, height-wise, I think, as you say, when you see they stand up, up straight there, they're about the same sort of height. I think because of Jupp's compact style he crouches, which is quite common, uh, pulls his chin in nice and tight, so I think it's quite nice to say that, that double jab working again there from Jupp, and I think if he does more, that, nice, nice there, nice right uppercut. Classy work from Jupp there, the uppercut and sneak right hand through. Excellent. And you see that left. Uh, he's down. Nice body shot there. I wonder how much the Vickers wants it. We said every time he's come to the UK he's been stopped. Is this going to be four out of four? No, it's Is it? It's all right. Classy work from Jack there. Like the way he varied between it. Well, that's four out of four. He's come to the UK and he's been stopped for the Vickers. Delayed the action there from the big kiss. He got up, he seemed to be walking to the corner, then he turned around again, he felt better of it. But then towards the end, obviously, he can get his breath. Yeah, I didn't fully see. 
see the shot that went him down, he's, he's back to us, as didn't see the shot, it was obviously a body shot, sometimes them body shots take a little bit while to register, um, don't know how hurt he was, but he didn't seem to want any more of it after he'd gone down and went back to his corner and he's sat on the stall now, so he looks like he's in some pain, but I didn't fully see the shot that Jupp landed, but he did work well between body and head throughout the fight, so I'm not surprised that the body shots eventually took their toll, but now we're going to watch the comeback kid, a.k.a. Kevin Greenwood from Ilford in Essex. Now Kevin lost his first two fights and many questioned whether he should continue. But Kevin knuckled down, he worked even harder and he got his personal life in order. He won his next three fights before last Saturday and here he took on James Child in what was an absolutely cracking contest. We're going to join that fight in round number three. It'd be interesting to see whether Child comes out in the third round very much the same stamp as he has the first two. I wonder if in the first 30 seconds he'll... Maybe he'll bury it off. He might wait till the end of the round. It's a big people by surprise. We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. It'd be interesting to see... I don't know what shape Child did. It'd be interesting to see if he could get himself in physical shape to sustain that kind of attack. Because for the first 30 seconds he seems to almost overwhelm Greenwood. Obviously, seems that you know, no one can keep that pace up for for the whole round, and I appreciate that. But it'd be interesting to see whether he can have two or three bursts left throughout a round. Whether he, that would be better for him going forward. Well, more sedate openings to round three after a whirlwind uh, opening first two rounds. Just as you said that there, they're both both fighters trade hooks. Nice one to establish for him. That's working very well. The nice straight shots down the middle. Greenwood's a very rangy fighter, he's got nice long arms. Looks at a one, two, and then looking to bring that left hook round. Yeah, he's very rangy. Um, uh, Kevin reminds me a bit of a Steve O'Meara type in terms of his you know, physique, and he you know, likes to box the range. Yeah, I mean, Steve O'Meara is a, a class operator, and, and yeah, so I can see the, the, the comparisons you're making, but I'm impressed with Kevin. I'm, I'm impressed with. Kevin from what he's done, pulled himself around and, and this round he hasn't had to survive the onslaught and he's controlling this round nicely at the moment. Keeps looking for that left hook to the body just behind Charles right elbow. And he can't seem to miss that straight right hand down the middle. Nice shot there. Child looking very tired now, he's occasionally tried to switch his focus to the body but Anticipating a strong flurry from Child now, but maybe he'll surprise us. Well, this maybe explains why he won a lot of amateur fights. And, oh, nice overhand right there from Greenwood. Maybe explains why Charles doesn't pick up the win yet, and he doesn't seem to have the work rate to sustain during the rounds. He's obviously got the power if, if he has stopped the amount of people in the amateurs he has done. So he can obviously bang, because stop, stoppages in the amateurs are harder to come by than in the pros. But he just doesn't seem to have the the gas in the tank to be able to sustain an attack and bearing in mind Ben that we're fighting two minute rounds. Absolutely. Dominant round three by Kevin Greenwood. Yeah it's got to be very impressed. I think Glenn Butcher in the corner and, and Greenwood will be very comfortable and very pleased so far that they're three rounds down and three rounds ahead. It just goes to show you as well, I mean we were talking in our fair earlier about there's a lot of good fighters who've lost from beating record and then yeah, just because you might lose one or your first two, there's, just, you know, there's no key to what could happen going forward. You know, all fights mature sure different, different ages. Yeah, as, as, as you say, we were talking earlier, I think too much is, is put on unbeaten records in, in boxing and everything else like that. You know, as you see from Conquest in the, in, the last, in the last fight, you know, a loss doesn't mean you're a bad fighter. It doesn't mean that you're overnight a shot fighter. You know, we've got to get realistic. This is strong men, tough men, throwing leather at your chin. And if you get caught, you can get knocked out. And yeah, you can lose. And I always use a football reference to explain it. You know, Manchester United were the champions of football last year, but if they lose a game, they don't automatically become a bad football team, they just lose a game. And, but yeah, a fighter seems to lose a fight, and all of a sudden, he's lost something about his thing, and, and I think that's wrong. I think, you know, it's, uh, it's boxing, things can happen, things can turn in one punch, and, you know, sometimes records can be misleading, as Greenwood is, is proving to people right now. Trade shots there. Chelsea right hand from Greenwood, right on Charles' chin, but he took it well. 
So this is the attack that Charles doing now. He's on top by again Greenwood. I think he's doing the cleaner work, looking for that straight right hand. Charles dropping his hand now, just a little bit too far out there, attacking with a jab. I have been impressed with Greenwood's work rate in this. So you know, we're into the fourth round now. I know it's two minutes, but he's kept up a nice, steady, steady pace. You know, constant pressure, and that's got to be pleasing for him in his corner. It's like one famous trainer once said, you know, whose name escapes me, it can be quite tiring beating someone up. Yeah, and Greenwood really is sustaining a heavy work rate here. Absolutely, yeah, he's doing well. He's, he's, you know, something's going on on Charles Love, but he's getting through with some, and it's, like I say, he doesn't seem, he seems to be in really, really good shape, Kevin. And uh, I think he's showing here. More from Child in this round, he was saying, yeah, he's giving it a go. Without much success so far, though. Okay, looking for that big left hand is Child, but I say Green would see it coming and manage to roll underneath it. Just mentioned about the heads there, the heads coming together as they're in close. Child's come back with a flurry we were talking about earlier, maybe. Oh, it's a nice right hand from Greenwood, lovely. A lazy left hook by Charles there and he got caught with Greenwood. He seems to have Greenwood backed up there. And I just when there's a glimpse that Charles might get a foothold in the fight, back comes Greenwood and takes the play away. Well, it was a nice throw from Charles there, backing up. And I thought he'd listen to you, Ben. You'd asked him at the beginning of this round to, <laughs> for him to come on a little bit stronger towards the end of the round and he did exactly that. Close around though. Close around, yeah? Yeah, close around. I still score it for Green, but I still think uh, he had the majority of the round and did the cleaning work. It's the, the common last 30 seconds. It's always the, the ref and the judges seem to, to remember the last 30 seconds. The last 30 seconds could be so important to get the round. And I think that's what Charles done there. But I think over the round there, I still think Greenwood was the cleaner work and deserves the round. Are, are you a fan of the uh, two rounds? Uh, two minute round duration, Kevin, a lot? Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I think it's to move from four rounds to six rounds could be a big joke. And, and the six twos is a kind of a medium way in between, and, and I see no problem with it. You don't tend to see it an awful lot, but they don't tend to stay at six twos for very long. Um, but it's a good transition. To, to uh, yeah, I, I've no problem with it. I, I'm quite a fan of it if, if uh, both fighters are are in agreements to it. Sometimes I think it makes a better fight because I think they know that they've got the two minutes so they can go out a little bit more. Lovely shots from Charles there, uppercut and then the right hook to follow. Yep. James Child is still in this fight. He might be behind on the scorehouse. He will need a knockout almost certainly to win, but he's not without hope here. Well, certainly the way we've seen it, we think Child needs at very least a knockdown. Uh, or a knockout to win this fight and again he started this round of a, a good throw there but credit to Greenwood he took it very well there and Greenwood's back establishing himself like he has done in the other rounds Child looking for that same uppercut hook combination that he caught Greenwood with early in the round left good hook left getting hook through there, there. Yeah, and, and Greenwood still winning the fight but he's less dominant than earlier though and another left hook he eating this. That's two or three in this round that he's taken. So Child is definitely getting through more this round. Yep. Clark is definitely thickening here. James Child's best spell perhaps since the opening 30 seconds of the fight. And maybe we were talking in the last round about how Greenwood set a really big pace. And maybe that is playing advantage to him there. But he answers back there with a nice little blurry three shot combination. Oh, nice. Greenwood looking for angles there, moving round. Two shots got through. What a good fight. Nice left hook getting through, and the right hand, the right hand back from Greenwood. They're having a go, Ben. Yeah, I could definitely watch this one again. Fantastic effort by both guys. We said before the fight was looking into this, it was a, a very sort of even fight in strange ways. Yeah, very much so. I'll see, although Kevin's won his last three and James hasn't won, yeah, it's perhaps not a, a massive deal between them. They've sort of equaled the amount of fights they've had. Okay, Kevin's say come off the back of three wins at the moment, but uh, it turned into a good fight that we thought it may be. I think it's a very, very close round this round. Well, I'm sure I'm just good after James Child. I think he just edged that one. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I think he, he got the cleaner work in that time. Greenwood's work rate tends to drop a little bit in that round. I think Child took advantage of that. I'm not very 
I think undoubtedly James needs a big, big finish though now. Yeah, I've got Greenwood's 4-1 up going into this. I think he won the first four and obviously give Charles that last one. Um, Charles needs to go for it in this round. He's got two minutes. He hasn't had a win yet. I think he's got to go, go you know, for everything but the kitchen sink at him in this round to try and get the win because he seems to have the power and although he hasn't hurt Greenwood with any shots at the moment, he is getting through, especially in that last round. So it'll be interesting to see whether Mickey in his corner there is just firing up saying to him, you know, have a go at this and it could be there if he really go for this. If James Child could nick a few wins, it'd be a fantastic entry for prize fighting. Absolutely, yeah, he's got the star for that, the short thing. The question marks may be over his fitness and his stamina and how long he can go, and that would be the, the thing I would say from Child going forward from this, is he can't seem to sustain an attack for very long, even in the two-minute rounds. But Sixth and final round then of a very entertaining scrap between um, James Child and Kevin Greenwood. I've been impressed with Greenwood, as I said before. He's just worked very well. He's a good work rate. Only in that fifth round, he dropped the work rate a little bit. But nice shots there, trading shots. A right hand for Greenwood and a left hand for Child. And Greenwood could really be used as, as a, a learning curve for, for you know young prospects out there that maybe have had a loss. And, you know, to say, look, you know, if you get in the gym and you improve and you dedicate to your sport, you can get wins. And, you know, it's all about grit and determination, how bad you want it. And I've only got admiration for Greenwood for how he's turned his career around and continues to turn his career around. Good shots by Greenwood there, but back comes Child. Be that kind of fight, really. Yeah, Greenwood having most of the, the thing with, with Child throwing the dangerous shots. As I said, Greenwood doesn't seem to have been hurt by any of these shots there. Nice right uppercut left hook there. Nice straight right hand through the middle. Both men have really earned the money this evening. Fantastic Definitely. effort by both. What a great middle of the card fight for the crowd here at York Court, which is a sellout. There's a lot of people here, and what a great show. What a great show these two boys have put on for everyone. Still winging shots in, Charles looking for them hooks. Greenwood looking down the middle, and that's it. Give that one to Greenwood. Yeah. A couple of wins for Greenwood in the end, but James Child, but hopefully if he keeps fighting right now, that elusive win, he will get it eventually. Yeah, I think Greenwood's got this. I think he's he, he easily won that. And, and Child again, you know, there, there is some some things to work with with Child, you know, he does do some things well, but it just needs to, in my opinion, needs to work on it so he can sustain the tank for a little bit longer than 30 seconds, and if he does that, maybe you could ask a few questions, but it'd be interesting to see how the referee scores it, we'll go and get confirmation on the scores. to look at Mr. Entertainment, Rakeem the Noble Ashai. He's fighting Johnny Greaves in his 99th professional fight. Rakeem is making his debut. He's, he's been training very well down at Miguel's gym with John Sims and it's his first fight, as I say, for us and in his professional career. We're going to join the fight with Johnny Greaves in the fourth and last round. Over to Kevin and Ben. And what can we expect from you against Johnny Greaves tomorrow? Could expect a unique, unorthodox style coming to the pro game. As an amateur, I was able to make my style effective with my fights. But as a pro, I think I'll do even better than before. So yeah, look out for me. Keep an eye on me. The noble Rakim Ashe. So again, Greens is coming. 
covering up very well we know he, he can do. Ashay again, very good control of distance there. I think he's easily ahead of this, Ben. How are you scoring it so far? Second up, four, the last round. You've got Ashay three, three ahead, Ben. Yeah, Ashay's leading his fight comfortably, but Johnny Green's barring something unforeseen. He's probably going to get through. It's the fourth and final round of his 99th contest, and I think Ashay shows some, um, some good skills in there tonight. He's worked the body particularly well. He, he fights with both hands. Yeah, very much so. It's, you know, he can be pleased from his, his pro debut. He, he's won every round comfortably against a, a fighter who's fought some, some really, really top boys. Okay, be it at the beginning of their careers, but you now they've still got a kick in the advertising ball down there. And we were saying before that Johnny Green sometimes can surprise at equal measures, and there he just got frustrated with the ringside photographers and lashed out. I've never seen that before. No, and uh, the cameraman might have got a good a couple of shots there as the advertising board come to him, advertising Toblerone come to him a bit, a bit fast. But yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, it's like fighters get pumped up and, you know, it's, uh, at least he was kicking advertising board and not a, and not a person, so. I'd be surprised if Johnny's a reprimanded by the board for that. I think Choice. coming up to his 100th fight, I don't think it's, uh, you know, you too much okay. to think. Oh, uh, who knows, who knows what the board will do, maybe they'll look into it, it's, uh, the end of the day, I don't think there's anything too malice in it. There's only an advertising board. But nice throw of punches from both there, both working the, the body well, a little spell. Oh. <laughs> Showing the tricks there, the punch behind. And after fairly subdued the first three rounds from Johnny Greaves, he's just starting to go to crowd now. This is the Greaves that we're used to seeing. This, this is, round is the Greaves we're used to seeing. It's taken a few rounds. We, we thought that he'd done far more subdued than what he normally is. Always entertaining, it's good. Pro debut people always tend to bring a lot of crowd and you know, the journey and winding the crowd up and things like that, it's good, gets a bit of atmosphere going. Yeah, and definitely, uh, definitely Nice barrier of punches there from Owen. Nice shot there, lovely shot. Lovely left uppercut there, really twisted Greaves' head all the way round. And maybe a little bit of a wobble there, he seems to have recovered quite nicely from that. But a lovely furry then caught him with a lovely uppercut. Sedate the first three rounds, round four's been pretty entertaining. More of what we expect, both having a go. I've been quite impressed with Ahmed there, especially that flurry there, he looked class there throwing shots and that left uppercut was really, really nice work. Use his leg to dip under there and then drive the left uppercut up and that was a good shot. Crowd's starting to get on Johnny Breeze's case, but I'm sure he won't mind this. <laughs> He's seen, heard it, and done it all before. All in the arms and gloves though from Greaves coming up nicely. Yeah, just like you're saying about his shade, Kevin, he's got a, a habit of obviously dropping his hands by his waist after he's, after he's unloaded. That's the only thing I'd say going from this fight that he's got to work on is making sure in close range, in distance he tends to, keep, he tends to keep them up. It tends to be when the other fighters they know him, he tends to drop his hands all the way down. In medium and short range, his hands tend to come down and that will be a worrying thing going forward, especially for someone who will be able to throw a shot from a short inside, a small compact fighter will be able to throw a counter hooks on the inside and, and uh, it's questions that we wouldn't really want to see asked of Ashe really. It's like Johnny Greaves is going to see this one out and he goes. No argument there, who's the winner? Yeah, comfortable win for Ashe Greaves there, 99 fights down, he's got his last one coming up. Very good fight, comfortable win for Ashe. So he showed some really nice stuff at times. Yeah, Johnny's become progressively more agitated as the fight's going on. Um, I don't know whether he's dissatisfied with his own performance, so he's certainly going to the crowd. He's very entertaining, he's, he's a very proud man, Johnny. He's, he's known up and down the circuit and he's loved up and down the circuit for, for what he does. And he started a lot of pros' careers and helped a lot of things. I say, journeymen play a huge part in this sport and, and uh, I think they're underrated a little bit. So it's, uh, he's always entertaining.
is next out on the 16th of November on the heavyweight explosion night at York Hall. And uh, I think Rakim put on a nice performance in his first fight. Very quick hands, nice flurries, and I think he could do very well. What do you think, Josh? Yeah, I completely agree. He showed good hand speed, but we need to hopefully see his power develop further on. Mm, the power, power seems, that, uh, seems to be that he needs to work on, but uh, we'll be looking to, to uh, build up on that. It's always hard against a, a real tough man like Johnny Greaves, who was in his 99th fight, and he's having his 100th fight later this month. And uh, I think Johnny was more concerned that he just didn't want to get cut because he ends his career this month and he's been a credit to the sport of boxing. Well, it was a fantastic night of ball in the hall. Um, I think you'll be, you will agree that uh, what you've seen is great. If you want to see all the fights uncut, then go to our YouTube site, GP Promotions. All the fights will be available on there for you to look at. Uh, and if you need any DVDs of the contest, then if you get, get in contact with us, we can arrange that for you as well. Um, but next Tuesday, 7.30 on Bayloric, worldwide.com, there'll be another preview show. We're going to have studio guests and interviews to go out online. We'll be unveiling uh, details of our next show. And we'll also be talking about the big, big show at the Copper Box on the 21st of September. That's all to come next Tuesday um, with special guests coming on, coming on into the studio. Until then, thanks a lot for watching and we'll be back with you next Tuesday at 7.30.